Hello guys. In this video I'm going to work on these two Lenovo Think Center A57. Uh, basically uh, I have an image of uh, Windows Vista from a Dell Optiplex uh, 745 on this uh, USB drive and uh, I'm going to try and clone it onto these PCs and then change the product key so I use the product key from each of these uh, PCs because they came with Windows Vista licenses on them. Uh, if that works it will save me a ton of time. If it doesn't work I have to reinstall Vista from scratch at least onto one of them and clone it to the other or even onto both of them. Depends uh, on how things will work out. So yeah, this is the spec uh, specs for the first of them. Pentium E5200 at 2.5 GHz, 3 gigs of RAM and uh, 160 gigs hard drive, but you cannot see that here. So, uh, actually no, sorry, hard drive is uh, 320 gigs, yeah, I was wrong on that, the second one has one, 160 gigs. So yeah, uh, I will start with this one because the other one has some problems with uh, startup. Basically it only starts uh, when it wants to. Most of the times you push the button and nothing happens. Basically I'm thinking that uh, in the PSU or uh, on the motherboard we have some bad capacitors. So uh, yeah, that will be probably a separate video where I uh, troubleshoot the problem, tear down this uh, PC and yeah, fix it so it will start normally every time. But let me start working on this first one. I will boot from a, a CD and uh, try to load that image onto it and hopefully things will work out. So let's get to it. Okay, cloning finished. But again we have a boot loop because of the SATA driver. So again we are going to use uh, Hiren's boot CD and uh, repair the registry so it will load uh, the standard SATA driver. If you want to know how to do this, uh, you can check in my videos. I did this for uh, Windows XP install and it works for uh, Vista as well and maybe even 7, 8, 10, not really sure. But for XP and Vista it works for sure. So I'm going to do that uh, to be able to boot into Windows. As you can see, Vista is loading now after we fixed the driver. But basically the computer now will work a lot to uh, find the drivers for uh, everything in this new PC. Because from a Dell to a Lenovo, about everything changed. So yeah. The drivers that it cannot find by itself, I will search online, uh, update them, but basically everything is already installed and configured like I did on the Dell. So yeah, way easier than installing everything again. But uh, yeah, that computer is the problem, I have to fix it. Okay. So basically this is the second day, because yesterday I had some trouble with this PC. Uh, Windows started up, uh, it installed almost all the drivers apart from the Intel video driver. Uh, I downloaded that one uh, from Lenovo website, I installed it and restarted the computer. Well, the second it uh, tried to start, uh, I would see the desktop for uh, one or two seconds and then it will go to a resolution that this monitor 
cannot support and uh, I've tried to uh, boot it in low resolution mode by pressing uh, F8 at Windows Startup it would go to 640 by 480 but uh, after one or two second, uh, seconds by itself it will go back to a resolution higher than uh, this which is the maximum this monitor can support and of course it would display uh, unsupported resolution or something like that and blank screen unable to to change the resolution without seeing anything and I don't have another monitor with uh, VJ input so yeah I was kind of stuck then I realized something basically because I was setting in Windows this low resolution and uh, it was changing by itself some program uh, was changing it, not Windows itself. And I realized I boot into safe mode, run uh, MS config, uh, got to this uh, screen and saw everything that has to do with the video driver and basically I just disabled them. So this do not load anymore at uh, Windows uh, startup. Then I booted, rebooted the system, pressed F8 and started it with uh, low resolution mode and voila you can see I have image and now let's change the resolution to what I want. And we are ok. And of course this uh, crap will remain unselected because I hate it when uh, programs change stuff without ask me, uh, asking me. So basically Intel could have made this to ask the user like, like Windows uh, asks if you want to keep the new resolution or not. Well this does not ask. It puts a new resolution and if your monitor cannot support that well you cannot do anything about it. So this will remain exactly this way. And like you can see, uh, because this is the second day, yesterday it was telling me I have three days to activate, now I only have two days. And this means that uh, Windows detected that this is a new PC and I have to input a new serial key for it. At this point I'm just going to click change product key. And uh, I'm going to turn this around and write the product key. And I'll get back to you in a second to see if this works. Hopefully it will. Okay, it worked uh, perfectly. Windows is activated with the serial key on the side of this PC. So yeah, basically I cloned one of those that had an XP installed put it on, uh, not XP, sorry, Vista install, put it on this one, change the key, install one driver, just one, and we have uh, activated Windows with everything set up the way I want it. If you see any flickering uh, lines, uh, the monitor is to blame. I'm using this just to work on various PCs, so I don't bother seeing what's the problem, it does this once in a while. If I shut it down and start it up again, most likely it will not do it again. Maybe in a few days it will do it again. Yeah, I'm not going to bother until it works even like this. So, yeah, basically this one is finished. What? Customer experience. I don't really care about that. Okay. And uh, what can I say? I will go to the next one, but uh, I have to fix that one. Probably bad caps somewhere. I will search for them, fix that in another video, and then come back to this video. Okay, guys. So basically I've switched uh, these two between them, uh, that one is the finished one, working perfectly and this is the one that it was not uh, starting up, 
Well, in the end it seems that it was a bad power supply, so I've replaced it with one that uh, I had laying around and it was uh, working well. Uh, the one from, from this case, uh, I will use it for another project where I don't need the 5 volt standby rail, so yeah, I don't have to fix anything on it actually, I will use it like it is because it is uh, outputting but uh, not on the the 5 volt rail it seems so yeah basically this is the configuration E2200 at 2.2 gigahertz uh, 2 gigs of RAM but in the end it will have uh, 3 gigs another uh, gig is uh, on its way and I will uh, put it in this PC but in another day uh, from what I remember, uh, 160 gig hard drive. I hope I'm not wrong, but I'm 99% sure. And uh, yeah, that's about it. At this point, I'm just going to reboot, and uh, I've cloned that PC after I did all the settings for the Lenovo, and I will clone it to this one, and then uh, then again change the serial key from Vista. So, basically, yeah, hope everything works as planned. Powered on. Windows detected again that I've uh, changed the PC. So I will just input the new code and all should work perfectly. Well, this worked perfectly like I hoped. Basically Windows is activated and this computer is also finished. I just have to add some more memory when it arrives and uh, yeah, that's about it. Next I will do some work on two HP computers. So uh, thanks guys for watching, hope you find uh, found this video entertaining, give it a like if so and see you in the next one. Bye.